I'm Elise Wells, here at the Temple of Ephea on Egina, an island off the coast of Artemida on the mainland in Greece. Ephea, the goddess of fertility and agriculture, the sister temple to the Parthenon of Athena and the temple of Poseidon in Sunio. The temple of Ephea has stood since the 14th century BC. Here on the island of Aegina, about 30 miles from the mainland, very close. We have the only known site where Ephea was worshipped. Ephea was the goddess of fertility and agriculture for the people of Aegina, their patron goddess. The temple is on the highest peak of the island. and you can see and hear the ocean, the Aegean Sea, lapping against the mountainside, even over the din of cicadas. We're standing in the outer court of Ephea's temple. And here was the stoa, the room for ritual behind the altar. Thousands of ancients and moderns have walked these steps up this temple to ask for blessings of fertility in their homes and on their land. thanks to the goddess Artemis. Artemis came to the aid of a wood nymph, Britomartis, who was lusted after by King Minos, or Minos, and she knew she didn't want him, she did not love him. So she ran, some say here to the top of Egina, others say to the mountain Dichte in Crete, or Crete, or Creta, where she is also worshiped in another aspect, Dictia. And she ran from Minos and got caught jumping from the mountain in some fishing nets. So Dictia actually means fishing nets. Ephea, before she was deified by Artemis, was the daughter of Zeus and Carme. And she was blessed and rescued by Artemis. Some say she, as a wood nymph, as Britomartis, was friends with Artemis, as they both were hunters of the mountain. Um, the word for mountain nymph over a wood nymph is actually Oread, Oread. And her temple was built here because there is a cave uh, no longer accessible that they say she hid in after she got out of the nets and met with Artemis. So it's where she was made a goddess. So the temple was built above that cave in honor of her and Artemis. Sometimes she is called Artemis Dictia or Artemis Ephea because she is seen as both a goddess in her own right by the people of Aegina and by the greater Athenians as an aspect of Artemis. This temple is also very significant to Athenians and the what we think of as Greece today. Greece was not united until 2,300 years ago uh, in the hegemony of Athens. 
And in this new culture of United City States, they built the Temple of Poseidon in Sunio on the mainland and the Temple of Artemis also uh, on the mainland and the Temple of Athena. The Temple of Athena is the Parthenon and that's the building that is above, the, the Acropolis, that is above the entire city of Athens. And they form a triangle, Athena, Poseidon, and here at Aphea forms a triangle, a perfect triangle, signifying the unity of water in Poseidon, war and conquest in Athena, and fertility and agriculture in Aphea, the most important elements of Greek culture and civilization. So these platforms here would have held statues, sadly long since gone, that had images likely of Aphea and Artemis, You can picture where their bases were. This is the remains of a base there. And the altar would have stood here. And the cistern falls behind the deeper well. And it would have been symmetrical. The Greeks loved symmetry. They saw the sacredness of symmetry. So there were statues. Again, you can see a base remain there on either side, likely Artemis and Aphea. The cistern would be a place where you could draw up blessed water and also make offerings into and although her temple most likely only dates uh, around 3,000 years ago at most, it is definite that it was used for 14,000 years in different ways for different deities. So perhaps she was Artemis first, and that is why we think that there was a aspect. And you can see how detailed and delicate crafting was on this incredible temple. You can see remains of writing on the pillars. You can see remains of color. Temples were very colorful. The paint has faded in the thousands of years but there was never white, pure white temples as originally thought by archeologists. They were always painted. And these columns are actually a unique style. They're, they're uh, not quite Corinthian because they have no flowers to them. They have no, uh, oddly for a fertility goddess, they have no harvest sheafs of wheat or anything that you would expect. And they also um, are not ionic they have no curls and they're not quite Doric either because they're not square. So it's a very unique temple in it's what looks today to be simplicity. But we are sure that there was definitely paint. And as science progresses and we're able to pull out the magic of that science can show us, I'm sure we'll find more details into the coloring that may have been here. And these ruins and remains were parts of the statue. In the thousands of years, there was very likely theft of the heads and the uh, accouchement that would have been included. Any weapons that she had held or, or scythes or staffs that might have been symbolic to her.
The playwright Spencer gave Britta Martis new life in his story of her fall to the nets. And the island of Egina is very small. So from all angles, you can see the temple. And from the temple, you can see almost all of Egina. In the thousands of years that Greece has existed, Egina has always been inhabited. It's thought to maybe be one of the most, the oldest inhabited places on earth. which gives the worship of Ephea even stronger significance. There's been reference to Ephea at the temple of Apollo. Apollo is Artemis's twin brother. So that's another strong case for the Artemis connection. Artemis is also the patron of Artemida still to this day, the county is called Artemida, and it is across the water. In fact, at the mainland, you can see it from the temple. And the temple of Artemis is actually older than the triangle that they made for the, temp for the temples of Poseidon, Athena, and Aphaea. Aphaea is a goddess who can be called upon when you need courage to run towards the changes you need to make in your life, and the courage to run away from that which you need to release. She's a goddess of fertility, not just in the aspects of procreation, but in the aspects of business and your personal life, things that you need to grow internally and externally. I hope you can find the wisdom of Aphaea in your practice and in your life, and I hope you've enjoyed experiencing the spirit of her place here in Egina Island, Greece.